Liverpool Automotive, Beansville, Fish and Chips, number 11 of Go Fast People. And starting sixth from Simcoe, the Extreme Liners of Aaron Rowetsky. Go for it. Heavy speed go to the back of the Coker at 7K into turn one. Timeline aboard car 11 p of Dundas, AXYZ International, 11 p is Patrick Abramson. Bonus services, Hollow Maple Farm, number 15 is Sean and Tommy. 6X, that is Mike Sirentakos. And going from the 24th starting position in car number 188 of the most speed in the Gales Auto Aftermarket Machine, that is Paul Longbow. Row number 13 on the inside line. Out of Stratford, the Bell Camp Manufacturing, Gales out of Lap 6, in car number 96. Driving the RP Sprinklers machine out of the board, car number 10, will be Ben Buckwall. Rich delivery, Baron Roofing, 18 R is Brad Rouse. Starting at fifth for the Lucas Oil Products, St. Amon Enterprises, car number 15. It's out of course, we've only completed two laps. This is how good of a season Jesse Costa is having. This last week, he's still fourth in points, and he's only 93. After a week, well, I guess he decided he'd, he'd had enough. In, in those 185 nights, he has competed in 378 races, 192 top fives. He has won 42 races. Ten of those were features. Greg, I raced for two seasons. I couldn't tell you how many races I won. <laughs> In two seasons. <laughs> that's pretty impressive. The the amount of uh, the amount of data he's collected and that's a pretty impressive career. That it is, and good to have him back. There was a time there that uh, he had stepped away from racing, but in the last couple of years has made his presence known again. And there he is, right in the middle, working the outside of Kevin Thorne, working off a of corner two with Chris French out in front. Rob Twitchett will follow him as the pole sitter slowly drifts up the banking in corner three. Yeah, Cody Somerville with issues there all the way to the back of the pack. Out in front, Christopher French with the lead. Rob Twitchett with a good start. He's up on the outside battling for the second spot with the 360 of Kevin Thorne. Guaranteed $750 in the 50-50 tonight. So flag down the sellers in the pink t-shirts as we continue on here. The HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. French out in front over Kevin Thorne. Who's had a good drive from the back of the pack. Mike Evers in the 265 up in the third position. Well in a transfer spot. Oh, Christopher French. There's a driver again who has had so much bad luck over the last little while. I thought he was going to pull in the pit. Makes the hard left turn and stays on the racetrack, but he is out of a qualified position. Thorne goes from seventh up to the lead now in the Burger Bar on Ace One Construction 360. Mike Evers second, Jason Tolton, who's come up from the eighth spot. He's right there alongside Evers going for the second position. So as of right now, Dave Goodacre in the 05 would be in a transfer spot to get into the feature event. That would be great to see, but... Might not last here as Christopher French back on the loud pedal closing in and Mike Evers in the 265. He may have some issues going on now and it sounds like that engine starting to miss. So it's Thorne, Tolton, Twitchett, and Mike Evers, your top four side by side for the fifth spot. Good acre and French who seemingly has that car going properly again. Not sure what happened that made him lose all those spots but seems to be okay as he works to the outside of that 265 and yeah as you said Adam that car does not sound too healthy nice to see Dave Goodacre in the 05 and the pinball Mike Giverson out there battling quite often the last season or two they, they kind of trail behind they're struggling with speed in those race cars but there they are right in the mix as Kevin Thorne takes the win Tolton comes home second Rob Twitchett third who's going to take home fourth Christopher French fourth Mike Evers fifth Goodacre sixth Mike Giverson, seventh. Well, I don't know if if we're able to get a replay on this or not, but Jeff Gingra says it looks like French's steering wheel came off coming out of corner four. So I don't I don't know if someone on the live stream was able to pick that up or not, but that that could certainly explain why he just kind of is Mike Saran tacos to his outside from Niagara Falls. The 19T is Trevor Warren. Starting fifth from Simcoe, the 88 is Aiden Nye. Starting sixth from Oshweekin, the 188 is Paul Longboat. Starting seventh in the 177 out of Oshweekin is Tim Jamison. Starting eighth out of Dundas, the 21 is Jonathan Ayrton. And rounding out the field from Waterford, the 46 is Wade Thorne. 
Into corner one they go. Three wide for the lead. Sarantakos on the bottom. Elslager on the outside. And Miller right there in that middle lane. And they continue to go door to door to door there down in corner three. Miller with a good head of steam down the back straightaway. But had to lift through three and four. The car just would not turn. Advantage to Elslager as Aiden Nice squeezes his way through the middle. A little bit of contact. Some bumper tag. But Steve Miller outside of the top five and a new three-wide battle for the lead. Yeah, Nye goes up through the middle and he will get by Elslager. Works to the outside of Sarantakos as they work off of corner number four. Nye at the front of the pack now. Sarantakos back to second. A lot of bumper tag going on in this one. Well, we talked about a little in the crate sprint heats. The track has not widened out to its full width yet. Everyone's still able to get a lot of bite running in the bottom groove or the middle groove. Nobody is really up on the outside. Right where Sarantakos is now, later on tonight, that's going to be a very usable groove. But right now, it hasn't been worked in. People are able to get the bite they need running lower on the track. Less racing room means more contact. Wade Thorne started in the back of this one. He's in the second spot. He's probably wishing there was a Nathan Ackland Top Gun Award in the mini stocks. He's done a nice job here, and he's right there on the back bumper of Aiden and I with two laps left to go. And he ran in a borrowed ride the last time he raced here, didn't he? Did he run in the Buckwall number yep. 10? Yep. And uh, maintained his position within the top five in the standings coming into tonight as Mike Sarantakos will take the 6X to the pit area. White flag is out. Eight and nine leads the way over Wayne Thorne. Then it's about four car lengths back to Jeff Elslager trying to hold off the 177 machine of Tim Jamison. He was unsuccessful. Jameson up to third. I don't think he's got time to go up and battle with that top two, but Wade Thorne does. Here they come off the fourth corner to the checkered flag. Nye keeps it wound up on the outside. He'll get the win over Thorne, Jameson, Elslager, and Longboat at the line grabs the fifth spot. Nice Trevor pass Long. by Longboat. Coming to the checkers. All kinds of confusion getting into the pit area here as some extra laps taken by the top two and the remainder of the field having a rough time getting into the pits. And there we see Jeremy May's car that was parked down in the infield. He was supposed to go from the pole in the first heat race. Just a, a rough season for the driver of the 16J. Yeah, I can't imagine he's having too much fun out there as he's getting that long push back to the pits. Hopefully, he'll be able to figure things out with that car. He was Zach number. Buckwald in the 10. Cole Hardy going to move up to the pole from Welland, Ontario in the 7C. So, he's going to be starting from first. Starting third is Tim Newell in the 26. Fourth out of Hamilton, the 96 is Brian Crosgrove. Martin Schroeder going to start fifth in the number 60. Starting sixth will be Fabio Oliveri in the 16. Tim DeBoer in the nine will start seventh and starting eighth in the 21H, Ryan Hiller. Green flag goes up in the air. Heat race number three of four. And Buckwald has a bit of a time getting started. That allows Crosgrove to work to his outside. And now Cole Hardy slows off the second corner. Wowzers. Everybody able to avoid him enough. You know, a little bit of jostling, a little bit of bumping and grinding, but nothing terrible as Cole Hardy has mechanical issues there on lap number one in that yellow 7C. Well, I saw earlier in the week he posted on Facebook looking for a backup ride so he could maintain his point standings coming into tonight. And then today they said they were able to get the car ready, but obviously something not quite right for the 7C of Cole Hardy. Pretty good first lap for Ryan Hiller in the 21. He started at the back of the field. He's up in third, battling for second to the inside, going into turn number one. That black number 21 takes the spot from Newell, but Newell with a good run on the outside of the turn, and here comes Martin Schroeder to make that a three-car battle. Through three and four they go with Tim DeBoer out in front in that car number nine, the Timson Auto Machine. He's second place in points, 22 points behind Kyle Wirt. And it's a 36 back from the leader to Dusty DeBoer. So Tim really is the one that uh, could get the closest right now to Kyle Word if Kyle were to have problems. But uh, he needs a good solid three weeks here to find himself at the top of the pile on that number nine. 
Two more laps to go twice around as Fabio Oliveri swings to the outside of Newell going down into turn number one. Give Oliveri that fourth position. Brian Crosgrove in the 96 had closed right in as well, but now he falls back by a few car lengths as we're coming to the white flag. Oh, fire underneath the 10 of Buckwald. Kablooey. And that car will coast down here to the infield. I believe the flames were short-lived. I believe it's gone out, but checkered flag in the air. DeBoer going to take this win. Second place to Hiller. Third to Schroeder. Fourth to Oliveri. Fifth to Newell. Crossgrove comes home sixth. Not sure if that's the same car that I, I just recently saw the, I believe it was Jeremy Hughes that was driving the car, fully engulfed in flames. Someone shared it on Facebook. I think it was just this week. I don't know if it was Laura that shared it, but uh I'm not sure if that's the exact same car, but the uh, second time we've seen some flames under that uh, neon, I guess is what it is. I'm not sure if that's the original Jeremy Hughes car. That was a rocket ship back in the day. Well, I'm rocket sure. ships put out a lot of flames. <laughs> <laughs> we have did. lift off. <laughs> so safety crew there quick and on the ready to help out the Buckwald Racing number 10. Uh, th uh, we have one more qualifying heat to go for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks and then our qualifying heats for the 360 Sprint Cars. Three heats for them as well. You know, when I, I said this earlier this year and I hope we get a chance to do it next Friday when, when we're on MAV TV Canada, but we need to do a feature on our fire and rescue team. This summer, I've paid more attention this year at all the other venues I've been at this summer None of them even compare, Greg, to how quick and how efficient and how effective our rescue team is. Yeah, it's second to none. There's some tracks you go to and you almost cringe at the thought of something scary happening, especially, I guess, over the years when I've traveled with the sprint cars with the Southern Ontario Sprints and, and that, and you go and, and you know some of the wrecks that they can get into and you think, wow. <laughs> what what if and you know what and i know it's it's challenging the 19 it's our points leader kyle work starting seventh in the number six it's ken hamilton starting eighth out of waterford the zero four is elise leduke rounding out the field in the number two is scheduled to be and there he is matt newell Final mini stock heat of the night comes to the green flag with Andy Reitman and Daniel McKay out there on that front row. Here comes the point leader, not wasting time, makes it four wide down in corners one and two. Kyle Wirt with a decent run into one and two, but everybody got off the corner well, so that top five still right there in the same pack. Sixth and seventh, Mike Taylor and Newell in the two. I was going to say they were dropping back, but Newell with a great run up off of turn number four. He's going to close in and make this a six-car battle at the front. Wirt looks low now on Reichman, who got a little sideways up in corner number one. He'll slip into the third spot. Tristan De Silva, his inside and at the front. Now Dusty DeBoer came into tonight. Third place in points. He's right there working by Daniel McKay as something rolled off on one of the cars there in corner four. DeBoer out in front. McKay holding on to second. Kyle Wirt looking for a lane to run. He follows McKay into turn number one and then points the car to the inside coming off two. Down the back stretch they go. Kyle Wirt now chasing down leader Dusty DeBoer in that Timson Auto number 23. Wirt slings it to the outside. Cross flags in the air. Three and three to go. Isn't it amazing how clean just having white wheels on that 19 car makes it look? It, that's a, it's a simple scheme, but it's a great looking car for Kyle Wirt. This time by two laps to go, says Kyle McKenzie with Dusty Moore leading the way over Wirt, McKay, De Silva, and Newell now your top five. Reichman back to sixth. Mike Taylor back there in the seventh spot. And LaDuke out there in her first appearance in the 0-4, getting some laps down. Kyle Wirt got awfully loose in turn two that time. It still looks like he's fighting a little bit of loose, but he's faster coming off of four as they race down under the white flag once more around DeBoer, trying to hold off Kyle Wirt, 
to take this heat race win. We're slinging the rear end of that number 19 off a of corner two, trying to catch Dusty DeBoer, but he's running out of time as the checkered flag will come up in the air from Kyle McKenzie, and it is waved as Dusty DeBoer will pick up the win over Kyle Wirt. Now problems for Reitman back in the sixth spot, but nonetheless, Daniel McCabe will finish third, Tristan De Silva. And the two of Newell will complete the top five. So Mike Taylor on the outside. And Andy Reichman also will go to the B main tonight along with Cody Somerville lines up on the pole for B main number one. The pinball Mike Guyberson to his outside. Steve Miller inside of row two. Dave Goodacre starting in the fourth spot. Position five, the six X of Mike Sirentakos alongside Trevor Want in the 19 T. The zero four of Elsie Leduc and the 21 of Jonathan Ayrton. Did I say Elsie? It's Elise, right? You said Elsie. I said Elsie. And with the RPMs the 04 was running, at least down into one and two, spins that car around. We may have to go yellow if she can't get it started up, and I believe she will not be able to. That will draw yellow. And that confused me. She's not scheduled to be in this B main. She was actually supposed to be in B main number two. I'm not sure why we run two B mains in the, uh, in well, the that Fender to first impression. <laughs> <sighs> but we get the opportunity week after week after <laughs> week. Oh, Jeremy May is actually in the 0-4 tonight. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Elise. So that's good. Elise actually got to hear me mess up her name, too. That's, that's perfect. Well, you know, it's the beauty of the interwebs. Jonathan Ayrton with a big start. He started way in the back. He's up there in the second spot right now looking to make a move on Trevor Want and hold off Mike Sarantakos and Steve Miller at the same time. Want, Ayrton, Miller, Sarantakos. All out in front. Dave Goodacre back there with the pinball. Mike Guyberson, some real veterans in this division. I thought one of them qualified, or did Christopher French pass them back and... Yeah, Christopher French Crushed got by. Hopes. Yeah. Halfway through, three laps down, three laps to go as Jeremy May around backwards again in the 0 4. The yellow flag flies as Jeremy May not able to get that car going. And it could be a matter of, you know, it's just not a car that he's used to. I don't think Jeremy May is intending to bring out yellow flags here. I think it's probably just trying to get situated and get the car fired again. Yep. So it's a very tough thing. It's a, it's a tough uh, mark to hit, of course, when we are floating around starting at 7.30 here. and Anything can happen between, or between then at 7.30 and 9. Quickly want to mention, though, with regards to uh, this 04 of May, because he was in this one, you're right, Greg, he had to start tailing this one. He, uh, this was his last shot. As long as nobody was qualified, he could try and get in this one, but he's having trouble there in the 04. Back to it, it's Trevor Want out front over Jonathan Ayrton. Want out in front, here comes Ayrton. He's got a good run on the inside of Want, going down into corner number three. Two laps to go, says Kyle McKenzie this time around. Twice more around is Steve Miller with a big run down the front straightaway. Couldn't do anything with that momentum. He sort of closed in. Jonathan Ayrton came up the racetrack into the line. Miller was running. Miller backed out of it a little bit. Now he's going to regroup in three and four. Head to the outside. White flag is out. The RWT renovations. Ford Mustang of Trevor Want. And he goes into corner one and loses power. Goes up the banking and gives up the top spot. Is it possible he thought it was the checkered flag? Boy, I hope not for his case. Checkered out. Jonathan Ayrton, Steve Miller, Mike Serentacos, one, two, and three across the line. We've seen that before from time to time. Either way, not the way 
Trevor Watt wanted his night to end. One of the gentlemen of the sport, Rick Robinson. I always enjoyed being around him in the pits. He raced here at Oshweekin Speedway. He raced on the pavement at Flamborough Speedway on Saturday nights. Green flag in the air. One B main still to come. That'll be for the 360 sprint cars. And then we'll head into our feature race and crate sprints will start us off tonight. Hamilton in that red, number six, driving up the inside. Did we see Jason Dixon tonight? Yes. Because I saw him pull uh, into the pits. He was in the lineup. I did not see if he was on the track, though, whether or not. I don't believe he was in his qualifying heat. He is here. Yeah, I saw him. I saw his truck and trailer pull into the pits earlier. I don't remember running him running a heat, which doesn't mean that he didn't. Andy Reitman out in front over Ken Hamilton and Tim Newell back there. Brian Crosgrove trying to close in as Mike Taylor with problems in the 17 as he takes it up into the pits. Halfway through this six lap B main is Brian Crosgrove with problems in three and four gets that car out of shape. Gathers it up, but I'm not sure if he's going to carry on or if he's going to take that car to the pits. No, he's going to stay on the racetrack. we got a battle brewing for the lead. Reichman has it. Hamilton right there on the inside line. It's time by. Two laps left to go. Hamilton will take the top spot away from Reichman with Newell right there behind both of them. Rick Robinson about a dozen car lengths behind, running in the fourth position. And Reichman had a run, but he had to lift just for a second. That allows Newell up to the inside as they charge through three and four, headed for the white flag. Hamilton, Newell, one and two. Reichman committed to that outside line back in the third spot now. Rick Robinson running in the fourth spot. Crossgrove behind him in fifth. Down the back straightaway for the final time. Hamilton leads the way. Newell in second with Reichman poking his nose to the inside. He'll shadow the 26 through three and four. Looked like he was going to swing to the outside, and that's what he'll do off the corner. Just a little bit too late. This is Hamilton, Newell, Reichman, Robinson, and Crossgrove. So one more B main left to go. Cool Kids Ice and Water Core Pack merchandising sprint cars. HRW Automotive Mini Stocks and their 15 lap main event going from the pole. In the Bell Camp Manufacturing 54, it's Christopher French alongside him, the Cal Tire number 69. It'll be Rob Twitchett. Inside of row number two, the 265, that's Mike Evers out of Caledonia to his outside the back. He trucks number one, Jason Tolt. Extended laps next week, I believe it is. Yeah, Gail Hill putting a bunch of cash into the pockets of these race car drivers in the mini stock division next week. The Thunderstock division here tonight. Always generous. That Gail Hill. Awesome that he's here at the racetrack. He hasn't been here every night this season, but uh, great that he's able to get out here tonight. Double greens in the air, and Mike Evers got a launch and a half out of corner number four. Evers with the lead through one and two. They're three wide for second. Christopher French in the middle. Rob Twitchett on the outside. Thorne on the inside. So Evers out in front. And then everyone behind him is Wade Thorne. He goes high in corner three. Up the banking. Comes back down onto the track. Not sure what happened there. Yeah, I didn't. The way his car shot to the outside, I figured something was broke on the front end and he was done. But... Not the case. He regroups, but he's back outside of the top 20 at the moment. Wade came into this race fifth in points, so he'll have to get on his horse and get back up there and uh, gather up some of those points that he's just let slip away as Mike Evers has pulled away over Kevin Thorne, Rob Twitchett, and Aiden Nye back there in the fourth spot. Fifth is Jeff Elslager, and he's got the number nine of Tim DeBoer right beside him. Kyle Work not too far behind them. Our points leader in that green and white number 19 is Christopher French dropping back through the field. More gremlins in that 54 machine. 
Wade Thorne, the 46, still having troubles at the back. He'll speed up and then slow down. Again, he was in the Buckwell 10 a couple of weeks back. So wondering if maybe still problems for the 46 is now Steve Miller goes around in corner one. Miller nosed into that inside wall, which is a tough place to be. He finds reverse, backs the car up, and he'll take off. No harm, no foul for that 79 machine as Mike Evers. Is he ever, oh, Kyle Ward, our points leader, down to the infield. Where is he going to go? I wasn't sure if he'd come out on the back straightaway, but he's going to come back on the front stretch on the entry of turn number one. Wow. Big hit for Kyle Wirt. Five laps on the board, 10 to go. He'll have a lot of real estate to make up. This one long from over, though. You got Evers out in front over Twitchett and DeBoer. That's Tim DeBoer back there in third. He came in tonight, 22 points behind Kyle Wirt. I think it's fair to say right now, Tim DeWar would love for it to stay this way to the end of the race. If the race ended right now. I didn't say it that way just for you. Adam. I know, but. <laughs> oh, Kyle Work goes around in front of the field. Down on the inside of the racetrack, that will bring out a yellow. It's Christopher French in the 54 rolls to a stop. On the inside of the front straightaway, Kyle Wirt now finds reverse in that 19. There's an opportune yellow flag for Kyle Wirt. The car is definitely not right. But a wise move if your point's racing, come take the green flag, you never know what could happen. Well, that is really moving around in the back end. That's got to be a handful for Kyle Wirt. As now Jason Tolton has problems on that restart and drops to the tail of the field. Meanwhile, Mike Evers is your leader. They're side by side behind him, Rob Twitchett and Tim DeBoer. I'm sure Mike Evers would be happy if they just stay side by side behind him the rest of this race. If he can get out and build up a lead like he had before that yellow, but doesn't look like he's going to be able to as Rob Twitchett with a good run down the front stretch. Oh, Evers lets up a bit. Twitchett now looks down to the inside. He'll get into Tim DeBoer a little bit. They'll stay side by side down the back stretch. Kyle Wharton at 19, something drastically wrong as he pulls off to the infield with the left rear hanging out of that race car. Evers, DeBoer, Hiller, and now Twitchett getting shuffled out of the top three. He'll take it back to the top, side by side for the lead. Evers down into the leader. He hits Hiller, and now they'll knock the blocks over in corner number two. Heavy damage to the front end of the 265 of Mike Evers. Mike was running in an unorthodox line. He was using quite a bit of racetrack. So he's going down into the corner, letting the car go way up, and then bringing it back down the racetrack. DeBoer got to the inside, and he was kind of there. So Mike Evers tried to uh, close the door, but it was too late. He'll pull that 265 down to the infield. A little bit of debris hanging off the back of one of those cars. I believe that's... Is that Tim Jamison? No, Paul Longboat's got Why do I? Why do I always confuse those two? It's only almost the end of the season. That doesn't affect my intelligence. So Tim DeBoer came in to tonight, second place in points. Gary from Ashboro, North Carolina. Loving the show. Thanks, guys. Joining us on our live feed. Thanks for tuning in, and thanks to the crowd that showed up tonight. A great crowd on hand here this evening. Back underway, Rob Twitch it up there with Tim DeBoer side by side. Rob looking for his first career mini stock win. He's been at this a long time. How about that blue and white number 21 yep. also looking for his first Ush Weekend Speedway win? Yeah, he's another one of those longtime competitors. Doesn't have a feature win yet. He's right up there in the thick of it. This is one of those nights where it's up for anybody. Now Kevin Thorne gets sideways, middle of the pack. Everyone gets through clearly. Whoa, Thorne with problems. He may have a flat left rear tire on that 360 machine. 
Caution flag out as we have some, as you would say, stuff on the front stretch. Stuff debris. Yes, Eric, we see you. Eric Moggison from Michigan joins us every Friday night. Tunes in. He tunes in to the micro sprints now that they're live streamed. Tunes into our Wednesday night show as well. The Race Rivals program. Clinton Jeffrey and I host that show every Wednesday night. Well, guys, tough break for Dusty DeBoer. He's been pulled over on the back shoot. 69. They'll make up the front row coming back to green. Paul Longboat in the 188. Aiden Nye in the 88. Jonathan Ayrton in the 21, the 11E of Jeff Elsliger, 60 of Martin Schroeder, the 2 of Matt Newell, the 360 of Kevin Thorne, who was scored in the top 10 the last lap. Obviously not anymore. Can Rob Twitchett score his first career win? The driver out of Dundas in that blue number 69. Or is it Tim DeBoer's night to shine in that nine machine? Paul Longboat would put on quite a celebration too, I think, if he was able to hang on and finish there in the top three. We're about to find out six laps. To the finish. Rob Twitchett got a good jump on that one, but here comes DeBoer back on the outside line. Three wide for the top spot as Paul Longboat works the bottom. Twitchett in the middle. DeBoer up top. They go into corner number three as Kevin Thorne scoots out onto the track right in front of the leaders. Wow, Paul Longboat with a great run up into that second spot, challenging for the lead. Multi-time winner on the old bomber track in the infield, but Never a winner yet in the mini stocks as one straight head on into the wall. Jason Tolton, I believe it was. Safety crew there. 188 looking for his first win. You've got, other than Tim DeBoer, You've got to go back to Fabio Oliveri. Is that right? And Dusty DeBoer would be the only other driver that, oh no, and Mike Sarantakos has a win as well, but not many winners left in this one. We can see a fresh winner tonight. Tim DeBoer wants to make that not the case as Paul Longboat pulls out and troubles for Rob Twitch, and what a heartbreak. Ah, Twitch in the 69 with a, a flat tire or something amiss on that race car. Meanwhile, up front, Paul Longbow gets all sorts of sideways in front of Tim DeBoer. They drag race down the front stretch. Side by side into corner number one with four laps left to go. Longboat on the bottom, DeBoer on top, then it's three wide behind them with Nye, Ayrton, and Tristan De Silva on the bottom. Tristan De Silva having a good run after he got involved earlier on in that mix-up with Kyle Wirt. He's up into the top five right now as the laps wind down in this mini stock feature. Tim DeBoer working the outside line. Paul Longboat on the bottom. I know uh, Dustin DeBoer is watching online right now, cheering his brother on, hoping for a big win here tonight. Two laps left to go in troubles for Tim DeBoer. Second place in points. Now he has problems. Two laps left and DeBoer, wow, and that got skinny on the front stretch. It's been a battle of attrition tonight in the mini stocks, and now it's Paul Longboat's race to lose, trying to hold off the 21 of Jonathan Ayrton. Paul Longboat's been going at this a couple of years. Multi-time bomber winner, looking for his first career win. Jonathan Ayrton's been at this a long time. He can see it one spot away from his first career win. Can he do it in the next half a lap? Down the backstretch, Paul Longboat's got this one on cruise control. He got a good launch through one and two, a good run down the back straightaway. Jonathan Ayrton trying to close in, but double checkered flags in the air. Paul Longboat, first time winner. Jonathan Ayrton, Tristan De Silva, Jeff Elsliger, Newell rounding out the top five. Wow. I thought Paul Longbow would be pretty excited to have a top three finish, but I want to see how pumped up this fella is for a feature win. He loves his racing here at Ashwick and Speedway. 
I have a feeling you're going to see him express that in the winner's circle. 2019 as Lone Wolf Fireworks help celebrate with Paul Longboat down to Mr. Transmission Victory Lane. Another first. Big hometown celebration tonight here in Arshwegan as Paul Longboat gets the feature win. Had here today, and uh, what does it mean to grab a hometown win after coming out of the Bombers? I figured you guys would be the ones we'd lose when we cancel that class, but you've been out stronger than ever, working hard, and tonight it paid off. What does it mean, man? Oh, this means a lot to me for tonight. I just love it. I know my dad's up there watching me tonight. I just love it. Thank you so much for Shriga Speedway. The track was lovely tonight. I love it. Let's talk about your run with Tim DeBoer there. You guys were side by side. He ended up with the right front, and that let you drive off to the end of this. Uh, who do you want to thank, Paul? I got to thank my main sponsors, um, Cool Kids, Ice and Water, and Gil's Auto Aftermarket. Awesome job. How about it? Paul Longbow gets it done here, ladies and gentlemen. Another emotional first time winner. Great to see down there in Mr. Transmission Victory Lane. Clinton Jeffrey lined up a second and third. Well, Jonathan, it was uh, a war of attrition tonight, and almost anybody could have picked up that win. Uh, you run pretty good for all the tough luck you've had this year. Yeah, this is a win for us right now. Left front went flat those last couple laps. We hit a piece of exhaust out on turn one and two, but you know what? All these guys back here, they're the reason I'm on this pad tonight. I can't thank these guys enough and all my sponsors. Great job for Jonathan Ayrton. We get over here and talk to Tristan Silva. Tristan, you've been coming on strong as well. Talk about what it means to be here on, on the Mr. Transmission podium. It feels amazing, man. Like, we fought all year. We've been up at fun. We've had a lot of rough at the beginning, especially at the beginning of this race. I hope Kyle Witt's okay. I hit him pretty hard. But, yeah, no, this feels amazing. I got to thank everyone who got me out here tonight and our sponsors. There you have it from the top three. How about a hand for Paul Longbow getting it done, ladies and gentlemen, here in Osh Weekend. You know, from time to time, Greg, especially, you know, after you watch the 360 sprint cars and then the mini stocks come out and you think they're just not that fast, are they? But when you see them have a race like that and you see the emotion down in victory lane it's hard it's hard to do that it's hard to win one of these races it's hard to finish even the top three all three of those drivers so appreciative of being down there tonight and the runs that they had and uh, that's